in this country called legal community, <laughs> were denied in performance of what they believe is their faith and their belief. During the hours, they were given time and right to testify and human rights activists and the human rights commission themselves justified those people to be practicing their religion. Anybody who, who stopped them from doing that, you are violating their human rights. But concerned today, that same human rights commission and those actors to tell Muslims that you cannot practice this who believe it is a religious practice and it's a cultural practice. Let me put this section of the country on the receipt of your public. Section 1, I will start with that of the Constitution of the Ghana. It says, the, this... Every citizen in this country is free to belong to any religion and practice or manifest that religion. This is what this supremacy of the Constitution is telling us. But number four also says, section four of the Constitution says, supremacy of the Constitution. This, it says, this Constitution is the supreme law of the country, and any other law found to be inconsistent with any provision of this Constitution, so, to the extent no of the inconsistency be void. This law, that we have of burning a video of female circumcision is inconsistent with our national law. Our national constitution, section 25, subsection 1c of the constitution says freedom of practice, freedom to practice any religion and to manifest such practice. This provision or this burning of female circumcision is inconsistent with the constitution. By restricting Muslims, part of section of the population who believe this is their religion and this is their culture. It is depriving them. It is discriminating. Why do we need to know that? And in fact, if we have a law, whether it is discriminatory by constitution or not, if we have a law that discriminates more than 75 percent of the population of their country, it's a bad law in any country you go. It's a bad law. It's a bad law, whether it's religious or cultural or whatsoever. Any provision that discriminates 75% of the population of that country is a bad law. Honorable Speaker, people who do not know to them at their wisdom and to me they are out of wisdom claim that this is not religion. Let them go and leave. We ask them, anybody who gives me an evidence of one guy or child who has gone to level and has a health complication. Because of female circumcision, I'm not saying female genital mutilation, because of female circumcision, as advised by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa you give me that one right now, I swear I will leave this post and say let's burn it right now. Anybody give me what certainty? For more than 15 years, you have been on the advocacy, you cannot give me those one statistic. An honorable member who makes laws is selling those there. You have taken your guide time. For if the security officers do not arrest you after this, after this session, if they arrest anybody, let's go out and protest. You, you, you confirm all that. You have taken your guide time. You are not arrested. Nothing is done to you. A poor mother, a poor mother in that booth has been arrested. Four me evidence that's unfair. What kind of a justice do we have? You must be arrested. <laughs> and to bear to my great surprise those who call themselves activists fighting right for the for the god do not know the law somebody went to bail an old woman you stand at platform and say that person must be arrested it's you who does not know the law oh that person does not know the law let's look at it now who does not know the law? Because the Constitution gives right for people to bail and be bailed. Someone was found worthy for violating the law and the person has been bailed and you went out being a human rights activist. You said that person should be arrested for, go for bailing someone else. What kind of a law is that? Some people are telling us, most of the people who are 
Sasa hili ni vita wa asaso. They tell us, they told me, look, we can have this law here. Even when Jambi was here, this was in the law. But he does not implement it. Why do we need to pretend in the law? Developed countries are not pretending if they are wrong. Why do we need to pretend if we know we are not implementing it? What they cry for is the funding gap. If the international community could sanction this country for funding gap, how many corruption issues do we to provide in this country? Millions of Gambian delegates was taken as an impress without any funding. That's all. So many corruption issues are going on. Why can't they sanction us? Yes, there is a very large point of order. And why today? What has changed? What has changed? We can dispose as a country. We can dispose as a country and sanitize this country. Yeah. We don't need to fight as a nation. Why do we need? Why can't we dispose as a country? Many circumcision has been done locally at Boost, but it's now been done at the hospital. You sanitize it. Yeah. They gave them drugs. That's what I'm saying. They do all the yeah. necessary measures to help so that they are not happy. Why can't we sanitize this one and train our bad attendants who are participants instead of asking them to stop their duties? Those who say our prophet has never said advice is or has never circumcised his wife or his daughter. The sunnahs of the Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam are that there are two sunnahs. What he has practiced and what he has seen people practicing, but do not stop them from practicing. These are the sunnahs of the prophet. It does not mean whatever prophet does not practice is not a sun. What prophet sees people practicing and does not advise them to stop it is a sun. This is a prophet. As I quote on the speaker on your movie show, Lion to Kuanil Hawa, in Hua in the Wahi Yuba. He does not speak on his spirit, only if Allah commands him to speak. And he has fulfilled all his mission in this world. What if he was done, he went back to his Lord. And his Lord confirmed he had fulfilled all his mission in this world. And anything that affects human life, Prophet would have told us. You think you have told us for and day? Tell me who is sitting there, who has been taken and been pressed by an angel to read, except him. He knows he is the best doctor who has ever created on the face of the earth. He would have advised his woman not to do this. But he advised the woman, when you are doing it, make sure you be proper. In Islam, if in Salah, if you overdo Salah, it's, it's not accepted in our religion. Nobody can pass for 12 months of the year. If you do it, this religion does not accept it as Islam. Our Islam is a complete way of life. It advises us as to what to do. And we believe in that prophet. We don't believe in any scientific justification from anybody. We believe in that prophet. He advises them how to do it. And he went to Medina also. He asked a woman, do you still have the same tools that you were using in Mecca? said, yes. The prophet advised him to still do it. The manner in which it will not affect their health. So now, what do you need to do? Do you need to ask them to do it in a way it will not affect their health? Or do you need to ask them to stop it? What is the question now? Let's say no. We should not be asking people to stop their religious practice. We should not be asking people to stop their practice with the ability in their culture. It is inconsistent with the provision. Honorable Speaker, I remain this as I conclude my deliberation today. Is that this banning of female circumcision is inconsistent with our constitution. And our next step is to challenge it at the core. Let, let us make everything clear. Our next step is to challenge it at the core because it is inconsistent with it. Our constitution before us tells us that, that every government must be free to worship any religion, to belong to any religion and manifest that religion. People are manifesting their religion, you say they have to stop them. For what reason? Honorable Secretary General, 